Welcome to episode 5, Mask. In this episode we're going to be using Photoshop to selectively edit parts of an image. Now this is really useful if you want to apply an effect or a correction to an image but without including the entirety of the image. This could be things like a discoloration in part of the screen, a sign that you think is too bright. We're going to go into Photoshop and do three quick tips on how to do that as well as using masking to create some added contrast to the image without destroying the blacks or the highlights. Let's go. I'm miles away, I'm miles away, I'm miles away. So here we are in Photoshop and the first thing we're going to do is have a quick explanation of what masking is. So the mask tool is down here in the bottom right hand side. It's the rectangle with the circle in the middle. So if you press that onto any given layer, you get this white box appear next to that layer. Now, for that white box, anything that is in white is visible. Anything that is in black isn't visible. So if I get the paintbrush here, make sure I've got a black brush selected and paint over this layer, you can see the transparent layer below the layer that I'm painting on. If I then swap back to white and use a bigger brush, it means I can paint that back in so you can see it again. What this means is that it's effectively an eraser tool that you can undo at any time. It also means you can select various different parts of that layer to edit or not edit by applying a editing layer such as a levels adjustment layer and then have it only affect a certain part of the image and that's what we're going to look at now. So we're going to have a look and see if we can add a curves layer and darken down part of this image but we might only want the bottom part of the image under here to have that curves effect. So whenever you add an adjustment layer like I did here through the adjustment layers curves section they automatically have a mask applied. So I can go and invert the mask if I wanted using control I and then just paint in white where I want that mask to happen. Obviously it's a little bit rough you can do things like use the gradient tool across here to click, drag and have it gradually fade into the image so you can see the difference that you have there. And you can then, because obviously you can edit it more, I can just paint out these sides if I didn't want them to be affected and that's only applying it to the bottom part of the image. A really nice way to use this is to selectively edit the colour in part of the image. So whereas in Lightroom when you're doing this you can change the saturation or luminance of yellow for example you have to do it globally across a whole image using Photoshop you can do that and then mask it so that it only applies to a certain part of the image. Now there's a really clear section in this that could use that exact effect. So down here you can see the reflection of the sign is really yellow because of the post-processing that happened in Lightroom. So we can add an adjustment layer with hue saturation which would alter the saturation of the whole image or the brightness of the whole image but instead we're going to select yellow and this gives us this slider here which shows us the colour that has been affected and some gradients trailing off so there's not a hard stop in what's being edited and then we can choose just to take pull the saturation down the yellows which you can see has quite a marked effect. So what we're then going to do is Control I to invert the layer mask and then grab our paintbrush, change it to be white, zoom in on the part of the image that we want to edit which is this yellow sign, have our brush tool much smaller and then just paint that section of the image. So I want it to be a little bit brighter I don't want it to affect the reds as much so I'm going to pull it in away from that reds and you can see on the bottom of the two rainbow sliders what is being affected in the colour spectrum and how it's being affected. So I'm going to pull that in a bit more, zoom out and then you can see how I've pulled out the yellows in that section and made it more natural and less distracting. Now my absolute favourite use for masks is a bit complicated but 
It's a process that you can learn and that you can add to an action so that you can press one button, it automatically does it, that can have a really nice effect on your image and is a really controlled way of adding contrast into an image. So what we're gonna do is come across the channels panel in the bottom right here. We're going to press control and select the RGB channel. And what that's done is select the highlights in the image and we're going to create a mask for that by pressing the mask tool, which we've got alpha one. We're then going to press control, shift and I, and that selects the inverse of what we've just selected. And then we're going to press the mask tool again and create another layer mask. So this will be dark half the image as opposed to the lighter half the image. Select back where I was. Now, the next thing to do is press Control A, that selects everything in the image, and then hold Control Alt, and then click on the Alpha 1 and the Alpha 2, and that is deselecting both of those from the selection. You'll then get the no pixels are more than 50% selected. Press OK to that, head back to your layers, create a curves layer, and then what you can see from the layer mask is that You've got the mid-tones selected, that's what you've just done, you've created a mid-tones mask. And then with this curve layer, you can alter the mid-tones of the image. And then it doesn't destroy either the extreme highlights or the extreme blacks. So you don't end up with that crushed blacks effect where there's nothing that can be seen in certain parts of the images. And also you don't blow out the image and have them being perfectly white. Now the nicest thing to do with this is to make a dot on this square, pull that down, make a dot up here and pull that up. So you're making a traditional S curve that you would do to add contrast to an image, but you're doing it in the mid-tone, so you're not likely to, again, crush either end of the brightness spectrum. And then what you can see you've got, by toggling it on and off, is a nice bit of contrast added into the image. Now I'll include the shortcut keys in order in the comments of this video so that you can create them yourself. There are also tools such as Luminar, which you can download, which allows you to press buttons and select various areas of luminosity in the image. But it's really nice doing it yourself with that very simple way in order to learn what it's doing and be able to do it anywhere without having to install Luminar on the computer. So that's it, that's episode five, Mask. In this episode, we've learned what masks do and how to use them very basically. We've learned how to use them to specifically edit color in sections of the image. And then we've learned how to create a mid-tones mask in order to add contrast to the mid-tones of the image and not affect the highlights or the shadows in order to keep the image looking good. The next episode is episode six, the final episode called Finish. In this episode, we're going to look at some sharpening that you can apply in Photoshop, as well as adding a vignette and also how to add a watermark to the end of your image. See you there. Boosh!